Okay, so let's look at the format string vulnerability. And this shows you all these things are really caused by the language C, by the way. C is just confusing to write and developers make mistakes. And that leads to all these problems. So uh, let me get this one, ED204. Uh, here's my command line. Let's move this one out of the way. All right. All right, I got to make one. What? Oh, oh, I, I did made it with spaces. Okay. There. Okay. Now I'm going to get the source code and the executable. Okay. And there they are, so I can shimode the executable. And uh, oh, I need a plus X. Yes, I do. Okay, plus X. Okay, now I can run it. Okay, and so I can run it with a string, like hello. And then it just echoes back the string. So let's look at the source code. All right. And I'll get rid of the colors. All right, so here we have it. All it's going to do is take a um, string and it's going to put it in a buffer that's 1024 and then it's just going to print it and that's it. Now there is a buffer overflow if you put it a string longer than 1000 but we're not going to exploit that vulnerability. We're going to exploit a different vulnerability which is this. When you print something you're supposed to do print and then have a format string like print quote percent x quote than the buffer. But C, for some ungodly reason, lets you print without the format string. You can just print something without specifying the format string. And if you do that, it will just make up some default format to use. So it printed the buffer and it was hello, which is fine. But what if I do this? If I give it a format string here, like a percent %x, then it prints something in hexadecimal. It interpreted that as the format string. And so now, if I look at my source code again, this is a little confusing unless you look at it from sort of the assembly language level. This is really easy if you look at the assembly language. When I call print, what it does is it enters the C library print function and it, when it, when it what C does, when you call it, it takes the argument list here and puts it on the stack. Then it calls print. Print just prints whatever it finds on the stack it assumes that the calling program has put the required arguments on the stack. First there's a format string, then there's something to print. If it didn't, it just prints whatever happens to be sitting there. So this creates an information disclosure vulnerability. You are now seeing data that the developer did not intend for you to see. So if you just put a series of percent %x's here, you'll be printing hexadecimal words off the stack and you can space it with printable characters like dots so you can see it. And so now you're just getting words of information off the stack that you weren't supposed to see. So this is information disclosure, but it's worse than that. To turn this into remote code execution, we use percent %n. And now we get a segmentation fault. Now the percent %n format in C is madness. I have no idea why it exists. But what the percent %n does, see the percent %x showed me what was there, this value. What the percent %n does is it writes to that location in memory. And the, so now here's another fun fact. This is um, 2F2E7825. Uh, that is, I think, this percent %x. So some of this data on the stack is the data that I put there. So let me go to my instructions. And I'll just shove them to the side again. All right. So, all right. Now I'm going to find how to control the parameter. And so let me get to my, uh, here we are. There, I had it. There. Make this bigger. All right. So now if I try this, I can run it. And instead of just giving it percent access, I'm going to put some letters here like A, 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 A. Okay. And then I'll try four percent X's. Uh, oh, I got it. I have only one string. I got to put a dot in here. 
Okay, there we are. That's what I wanted to show you. So I put in the A's, and now here they are. So whatever you put here will appear as the fourth parameter after that on the stack. So now, if I put a percent %n there, it will write to this location. So now I can write to a location, and I can control the location I write to. That's the, so we're going to take over the box with that vulnerability. And let me uh, turn off this beeper. All right. So there's, all right, now the next thing is to choose a RAM location to write to. And for that, we can do this. Um, let's look at the code, GDB minus Q, Q, I say. ED204. All right. And then disassemble main. All right. So you can notice what functions are called. Here it calls printf, and here it calls exit. And that's pretty much the end. Then there's print car. So now what you can do, what we're going to do is hijack one of these C library calls. We're going to redirect it to go to something else. And that's going to make it unusable. So we have to make sure that we go to the call to printf, put car exit. So what we could do is we could hijack the exit call. And that's what we're going to do. And you can see these calls if you use object dump. So object dump minus r will give you relocation records for the program. And there they are. These are the C library relocation records. There's a table kept of these. It never jumps directly into C library. It jumps into a relocation table, which then goes to the library. Um, and we can modify it in the relocation table. So we can hijack the exit command by writing to this location, 0804A014. And it might be different on your system, but the principle will still be the same. If we write to that location, it will hijack this exit call and go somewhere else. So uh, we can write to it. And so let me go back into GDP. And by checking, that's exactly the same. Yeah, I don't need to modify my instructions because this Debian machine I'm running locally has the same value as the Debian machine in the Google Cloud that I developed this project on. So I go in here. So now I'm going to execute or I'm examine with one X that location. This is the original relocation record. And as you can see, it does point to exit. All right, that's what's normally there. Now I'm going to run this program, and I'm going to change that value. And this is the string that does it. 0804A014, then percent %x, percent %x, percent %x, percent %n. This will feed that value onto the stack, and write to that value. And now, if I examine that thing again, you see now it has changed from 0804.83.66 to 14. Now, what I haven't talked about yet is what the percent %n writes. The number it writes is equal to the number of characters that have been printed total so far. That's why I don't know what the point of this thing is. It must be something to do with uh, C formatting strings when they print them. So I've only printed 14 characters out here. That's what all this adds up to. So that's why I wrote a 14 there. So that's the, uh, the essence of it. And now we can make the Python code that exploits this thing in more detail. So there are various ways to do it, but this is what I thought was the easiest. Um, oh, I mean Q to get out of here. Okay, so I nano f1.py. Whoa, whoa, can't spell. All right, so here um, I'm going to write all these things. So each one of them, I add this address. Then I have to have four bytes. Uh, I kind of forget why, but you have to have another four bytes to space things out. Then another one. And here's percent x, percent x, percent x, percent n percent x for the junk percent n percent x. I think I might be able to delete these intermediate percent x's and then I wouldn't need the junk. But anyway, it works this way. So this way I'm going to write four times. I'm going to write in location 14, 15, 16, and 17. And each time it's going to write a 32-bit word 
So I'm going to write the byte and overwrite the other bytes with the future write. So this will replace all four, um, all four bytes in that address. So make that executable. Plus X F1. Whoa, whoa. Plus X. Still got caps lock A F there. All right. And now I can go back into my debugger. There it is. And I can run. Uh, let's do that examine again. Is it in my up there list? I'm going to do the examine first. So we see the unmodified relocation record, which is here. Okay. That's the one that really points to exit. Now I run with f1.py. And now I examine that. And here's all that stuff, junk, 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 and all that hexadecimal stuff printed out. And now it's been overwritten to 30, 38, 40, 48, because it's printed eight more characters each time. And it prints a value equal to the running total of all the characters it's printed so far. So now I know how to write all 32 bits into that register. And I just need to calculate the bits to bring it under more control. So that's the next one here, F2. All right. And what this one will do is um, I just choose values to target, A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, because I don't know what to target yet, but I want to target. Then you take 256 plus this minus, these are the numbers I just determined by trial and error to be the right number. And so it'll be multiples of 256 are okay, because I'm only keeping the lowest byte of what I write. And this, by the way, is uh, a way I learned to encode these numbers in Latin 1. This got something to do with the Python 3 convert into a string. So. This is how you convert those. This is how you convert those hexadecimal these numbers into raw bytes in Python three, and then print it out with the same thing we'd be doing. It was this standard out buffer write. So that should target this address a a b b c c d d. Let's try that one. Schmode plus x f two. Okay, then g debug it again, and. Let's examine the uh, location. Again, there's the unmodified location. Now I run. OK, and see it prints out a f quite a lot more data, 256 random padding characters now and then. Now I examine it. And now it is A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. So that's the program that writes in what I want. And now that I've done that, I need to um, put in dummy shell code, which is going to be this F3. All right, let's get out of here. All right, so now what I'm going to do, this is all the same, even the AABBCCDD. The only part that's new is down here. I'm going to have this NOP sled and shell code. So I have 190s and I have um, CC. And actually, I'm thinking I need to have Bs here and make these bytes. Pretty sure I need to have bytes there. Let's see if this works. All right. Now if I run it, uh, run, permission denied. I forgot to ex make it executable. OK. Now I'll run this again. OK, it prints out all that junk, including non-printable characters. It looks good. Now I should be able to examine that location. 
and it's still pointing to A, B, B, C, C, D, D, but I need to choose a place to put it, and for that it's going to be somewhere on the stack. So I can just X, 100X, ESP, and here I see the stuff I wrote. Here's the NOP sled, here's the dummy shell code. So to hit somewhere in my NOP sled, I choose an address like this, and uh, that'll do. Copy. And that's what I want to put in my um, exploit. So I'll get out of here and I'll copy F3 to F, F3 to F4. Nano F4.py. And all I want to do is change this address to point there. So I put that here. There. And so it's going to be um, FF, FF, CF, CC. Oops. There. That should work. All right. Let's see if, and uh, I still have dummy shell code. So that's, I can just want to run that and see if it works. Okay. So make it executable. Actually, I don't have to because I copied it. So I can just debug again. And now I can run. dollars f4 and it made it to the breakpoint that's what I wanted to see and I can examine it and you see I jumped up here and then it went nop 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 and the CC is a break that's why I did it this way so when it told me it hit the breakpoint trap at this location d5000 I can see it ran nop, 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 and here it is, FC, D0, this is D5. So I know it worked. So now I've proven that I control execution and I can eject code, and now all I have to do is use Metasploit to make a payload and run it, which I don't think I'll bother to demonstrate. This is the point, and the project goes on to cover that, but it's the same as before. Um, and so uh, that shows quite a few new techniques. And that's how you can take an arbitrary write and take over the box. And um, after taking this course, which we've covered part of here, one of my students was an Apple developer. And he had never thought of doing these attacks. And he went and developed the new jailbreak for the iPhone, the newest one in eight years, called um, Checkmate. Because of this, he realized he went and got um, Ida Pro, paid like 4000 bucks to get and stared at the Apple patch. And he found that there was a way to write a single byte to memory you weren't supposed to be able to reach that was zero. And with that, he totally took over the phone, which is pretty awesome. So, I mean, this is how you exploit a write operation. Anyway, that's it for this demo.